It's in there. I'll take that. Ah! Didn't mean to do that. I've been tag oiled. Happening Z hood. Here's our brake rotor. There was our brake rotor. It's the summer of infinite and non-stop air conditioning work and we return to our, I think it was a 2006 Doge Charger 5.7 Hemi V8. In the last episode, this is part two, uh, link to part one in this description, but in the last uh, episode, uh, when this thing came in, we found that both of the dual zone blend door actuators inside of the dash were both inoperative. Uh, one side was stuck on cold and it had no heat on the driver's side and then the passenger side, it did operate, but it made this horrendous clicking noise. Well, there it goes, clicking noise in overtime. All right. So uh, we ended up putting two actuators in it and found that at the center vent, it was only making like 75 degree air. So uh, I hooked the AC machine to it. The low side, that's annoying. The low side pressure on the AC system under the hood was at about 60 PSI, which was way, way too high for good cooling. So we popped out the expansion valve, put a new valve in, and then found we had about 50 PSI on the low side. Uh, we had something of an improvement, but not much. So based on what we had discovered uh, in the prior video, we're gonna go ahead and pull this AC compressing unit out and uh, get it changed with a new replacement unit. Then we're gonna recharge it. Then we're gonna try again. So that's the plan. Let's get the machine out. Let's get the serpentine belt off and let's get that unit unbolted. Silly me, I raised that car all the way up in the air and I had to let it back down again because I need to get to the serpentine belt. Love my job so much, I'll do it twice. All right, so down underneath of our intake tube, we have our belt tensioner right there. See that guy with the pulley on the end? That's what's keeping our belt tight. So what I'm gonna do is get in here with a uh, three inch drive ratchet and we're gonna untension that tensioner, pull the belt off a little bit. And then uh, once the belt is free and removed, we can go back down below and attempt to remove this compressing unit. All right, let's pull up on this guy right here. And I'm just gonna grab this uh, belt from under this idler pulley right there. Slip that guy out. That should be enough to get the belt off of the compressor down below. So we can leave that ratchet right where it's at and I think we're good to proceed here. All right, let's get this thing back up in the air. Again, moving on up. Black subscribe button. Friendly reminder. All right, we're there. It's up, top of the rack. So let's, uh, I guess we're gonna get started with this bottom cover right here so we have ease of access. And then we'll go in there through the bottom and pluck that compressing unit out from its home. Looks like it's secured with uh, three or four bolts, the belt's off, and there's just one manifold for the hoses. So this should be uh, fairly easy and simplistic. Okay, dokes, first things first, we need to pluck out all of these little push clips right here and pull this, uh, this shielding down. All right, let's see if the quarter inch driver can pull these bolts out. Yes. So far they can, how about that? That's, that one's not gonna reach. That one's not gonna reach. Well, I got one of them out. Let's unconnect our connector up there. It's that little guy right there with the little red thing sticking out of it. The little red thing is the, that's like the safety clip connector retainer. You can push that thing out and then uh, we can unconnect the connector. Easier said than done right here, I think. I can't get the little red guy to pop out. Come here, you. Flashlight. Oh, that didn't work. Try again. Here, trying again. Gotta push that little, uh, little red clip back here. Let me just get, if I get behind it, I can push harder on the thing. I cannot reach anything. Nope, not like that. There we go. Okay, that's one clip unclipped. Now I need to get the actual connector out. Here it comes. That's good. All right, 
So we've got, there's a 15, a 15, and looks like two 13s up there on the manifold, which I cannot reach really. So I'm gonna unbolt this and drop it down. That's the plan. I'm gonna go after that hardest one first with the extendo wobble drive socket right here on a, on a ratchet. I should be able to get that one out with the, this method. An impact's not gonna go in there. On kicks. Oh, that's tight. More. There we go. She's turning. Ooh, still had dirt falling out. All right, that's bolt number two. And the last one looks like it's straight up from us, right there on the back side of that compressor. So here, let's go back in with our extendo socket. Break this one loose. Oh, another one right in front of us. Yep, right there to the left. <clears throat> Come on now. Break loose. Unclick. That's the tightest one yet. And it's moving, so it's free. More dirt falling out. Nasty. Okay, that's all the bolt. Now I just need to reach up and get the uh, AC lines disconnected that I can wiggle this thing out. So there's a 13 right up there above us. And I think I gotta take that line off and maybe I can reach the one past that. Here, we'll just try this with a a regular wrench. See if I can't get a bite on it. Now, might need a wobble. And clicks. Or a flex head, not a wobble. Get a flex head wrench. That turned. Okay, that bolt's gonna come out. Nut. That's a nut. Let's get it loose enough. I can spin it out by hand. Come here. This is my fifth AC job this month. They all didn't require compressors, but this is also, I think, my third compressor. It's been so hot outside that the AC systems aren't keeping up with uh, the demand. It's not gonna fit. ACs aren't keeping up with the demand and weak compressors are starting to show their true colors. And you know, that's usually how it goes too. You see, your compressor can be crapping out and it's working okay until you get to those real, real hot days and then it turns into a problem. Almost there with our little nut. Let's get that guy off, there we go. Now I can turn it by hand. And it stopped. And yeah. And yeah, no problem. This thing's still got pressure in it, it better not. I discharged it the other day. I think it does. Just maybe a little bit. Come on, nut. Raw. Yeah, there's a wee bit of pressure in there, you hear it? It's nothing but air there. Come on. These are gonna be fun to put back on, let me tell you. It's gonna be so much fun. All right, I have the nut removed. Now, let's just work that fitting away. Just wiggle it some. A very thin gasket in there. I don't wanna gouge up the surface here. Oh, come on, there. Okay, there's one, and then the next one, you guys can't see, it's right it's right up in, like right here by my, my pointer finger there. Look at that. Let me try to get this guy out. It's close quarters combat. On clickage? Nope. 
one more bite on it. There we go, that one turned a little bit. Can I get this one to come off by hand or what? Give yourself a carpal tunnel in here. Here, I'll go in there with a socket in my fingers and try to get that to come out. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's easier, much easier. Get more leverage with a tool. And come on, don't get stuck. There we go. Got it. All right, that nuts off. It's both nuts. Let me wiggle this hose out of there. And this unit should be uh, coming down nice and free and all that good stuff. Hmm. Now, the hose doesn't want to let go. And I can't really get to the. I'll just keep wiggling it. Here we go. It's moving. It's moving now. Wiggle back and forth, back and forth, and pulling at the same time it comes, it came out. So now, I think this thing comes down through this hole right in front of us here. Let's see if it's gonna squeeze through there or not. Kind of a tight squeeze. The studs on the compressor are hanging me up. Uh, come here, transmission lines. I go under him? No. Hmm. This thing is what's hanging me up. Uh, let's see. Here you guys come back this way some. Let's try uh, try something different. I'll go. I'll go up. Can I go forward maybe through here? No. It's not gonna fit. I got all the space in the world here to work on this and not enough to get it to come through the bottom of the car. That's silliness. Seriously? Maybe if I turn it, dirt in the face. Now the belt's falling off too, that sucks. Put that belt back up there somewhere. Get that later. Seriously? Can't, I can't get it out. All right, well, since this line bracket mount thing is in the way, I'm just gonna take it off. Maybe I can, maybe I'll flex it or take it off and flex it. There we go. That works. So what I need to do, I have to bend these little tabs out and we'll bend them back once uh, I put this thing back together. See that? Now, are you gonna fit through there? I gave myself a bunch more space. Mm. Not enough. Rotate, there we go. I figured out Pandora's box. Got her. All right, that is our compressor. Left compressor death down in there. Okay. Take this guy. Got the new one over here on the bench. It is a Delco. I think that's a new Delco compressor. Yep. First time fit, guaranteed. So that's our new one. It was either a Delco or the other options were generic brand names or non brand names, and I went with the Delco. So it seems to match up. That's what we're looking for. Okay, I'll leave the plugs in so I don't spill oil. And let's get this guy back up into position. Or not Delco, Denso, I just read it wrong, look at me. It's a Denso compressor, not a Delco. Who puts Delco parts on a Mopar? I mean, I would, I totally would. All right, carefully doing this the exact way that we, un actually, you know what? Back up, back up, compressor O-rings, hang on. Let me get these guys off the lines and we'll swap them out with some new ones. A little pocket screwdriver for the win. Let's get behind it. Easier said than done, right? Well, I keep saying it, but I'm not doing it. There we go. 
There's one and the uh, flat gasket right here. O-ring number two. It's on our suction line, that's the larger line. Pop that guy out and the gasket comes with it. There we go. All righty, we've got replacement components coming in here. Got these little black seals. That one slides on like so. And then our new O-ring that goes with it right there. And this one right over down there. And then a little green O-ring that goes with it. Oh, that one's backwards. It has little fingers that go into the hole on the manifold side there. Come here. Flip that around. There we go. And do a ring for this one as well. There. So we'll tuck those up out of the way if they're going to stay. Stay. Okay. And presser is next. You're coming in. Same way it came out. We go, we go through the hole. Is this right? I hope this is right. Get myself stuck. And then I'm supposed to rotate it and turn it. I already forgot how I did that. All right, trying again. Compressor up and in past these transmission lines. And then I've got to rotate it, right? Isn't that how this came out? I know you go in there because the other one just came out. What are we doing? Yeah, I had to, I rotated it, didn't I? What's his problem? Higher up, hose, lines, what's the deal here? What am I stuck on? The engine, the clutch is hitting the engine up there. That's, ooh, now it's stuck. No way. Dude, come on, I know that thing came right out. More stuff. I had it rotated, right? Is that what we did? Getting muscle fatigue now. Holding this thing up in the air. Just go in, compressor. Just go, just go to your home up there, and then we're all good, right? That's all we got to do is just, just go in. Hey, wait, it's in some. It's in more than it was. This is not the way that it came apart, but it's in there. I'll take that. Yeah. Didn't mean to do that. I've been tag oiled. Here, let's just put that back where I found it. For now. That was stupid. Here, you guys got oil on your face. Sorry. You've been lubricated. All right, so since that idea was horrible, let me try a different idea. Uh, this idea will be to just set this thing up in its bolts. And then, uh, then I'll try to put the hoses on. I think two of them should be good enough to hold it, right? Sure. Yeah, stay there. All right, reaching up and through and above the little frame rail here. I'm gonna try this again. Those, uh, okay, yeah, they're pointed up, so maybe this won't dump all over me. There's our first plug. We wiggle that guy in and then uh, we'll get that one tight. It's seated. Here's the 13. Let's spin this guy on and get that 13 tight. Uh, a little 
little more. Yep, tight squeeze up there. There's a flashlight. Lost one. And a and my wrench. I'm all butter fingers. Maybe if you'd slow down. This is one of those situations where these little stubby ratchets are super handy because you can't really get a, a full size ratchet in there to swing or wrench. Words. You can't get a full size wrench, full length wrench rather, to get a good amount of throw. A little more. Get on there. It's almost tight. We get like one more turn out of it. There we go, that one's tight. Now for the suction side. Is this suction? No, this is discharge. This one's discharge. It's the smaller hose. Get that one in and on and plugged. There we go. And then one more, one more 13 nut for that one. Oh, good. Couple turns on this guy right here. And we'll get the compressor bolted to the block. Plugged in and evacuated, recharged, and then we'll check those temps. Oh, clickage. Let's see, there's my bolt. We got one more bolt right up here. That was the hard one. Let's get that one in there. Okay, threads are started. Okay, that's three down. Fourth one in the back. That one goes right there. Let's run these down some. Come tight, please. Compressor click. Let's get that awkward one way up there in that hole. That one's tightish. Now it's more tightish. Now it's all the way tightish. There we go. And we can plug in our connector now. Put that on, push the little red guy back, that's secure. And we have our bracket that I took apart. We gotta get that thing back on for the trans lines. Would not be okay to leave it off, because then the lines will vibrate. It could cause a trans fluid leak. I'm gonna slip that up and over rubber grommet thing and I've got to bend it back to its original shape it's been tweaked and manipulated pliers coming in hmm I'm gonna do that can't reach I'll figure it out I'll just reach sideways that down All right, now this piece bend that back and I just have to bend in those little tabs that I uh, straightened out earlier Get that one that one a little more it's not enough I need maximum tab bendage ah, there that goes right through there, up into the block, and that secures the compressor and the trans lines. Let's make it tight. Hmm, clickage. All right, good to go. 
Okay, let's let this thing down and get the belt back on it, which it's all discompobulated now. Let's get the belt back on it and uh, recharge the system. Light remove, roll cart remove. All right, vehicle is on the ground. Let's go back around to the front over here. And what I'm gonna do is set the AC machine up and start pulling a vacuum. And I'll let the machine vacuum while we're going in to fix that serpentine belt. Machine powering on. Let's roll it on over. Let's get our hoses connectored. That's our high side and low sides. Get a silly little angle down there. Look at that. Who did that? Who's the Dodge guy that engineered that? And why would you do that? What's wrong with you? No matter. Reach down. Wiggle it on. Let it fall off. Try it again. Turn the valve thing. Why is that valve so tight? There. Open and open. Initiate vacuum, beginning vacuum process now with that thing doing its thing. And then we can go back down here and figure out how to untangle that belt mess that I created. Let's see what we've got. Okay, it's in the wrong. It was over the compressor, not under the compressor. That's that's a start. So we'll push. Oh, it fell off the tensioner too. Okay, that goes over our power steering. And then right here, I need to slip that over the tensioner. There we go. And then it goes down and under the compressor. That's how she goes. Okay, much better. All right, let's grab our ratchet and I need to reach back and get a hold of that belt then just slip it over the nader so we're gonna untension slip it over oh there we go I think I got it and let me fetch my light that I dropped taking a look at all the pulleys making sure that nobody's a rib off looking at the crankshaft pulley that one looks good AC compressor pulley that's good Power steering good, tensioner's good. Okay, so all the pulleys are straight in alignment with the belt. And I need to fetch my ratchet. Look that out. There we go. Okay. Are we vacuuming? Are we done? Oh, I didn't turn the vacuum on. Come on. I failed. All right, I'll be back when that's done. I got my goodies here. All right, X amount of time has passed. The vacuum is complete. We're looking for 1.625 pounds of refrigerant in the system. It's holding vacuum, so no massively large leaks. Begin charging now, not a POE system. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Wait complete. Yes. Waiting some more. Please wait, wait, waiting. 0.1625 pounds. And uh, I don't have any patience today, so we're going to do this on the low side. Do low side charge, please. There we go. Oh, and while we were waiting, while it was vacuuming, I installed uh, one extra ounce of tag oil due to uh, the spillage of the oil that I spilled. In case you're wondering. So, now that that thing's about to charge, let's reach on in here, restarting the engine. And since we're doing a low side charge, I can turn the compressor on. It'll be fine because it'll pull from the low side, pressurize it to the high side, circulate it like such. So, that's fine. I can turn it on if I want to. Like I said, we're trying to get out of here. We're running out of time. Charging coming in. 0.4 pounds coming in. And the compressor has not yet engaged, I don't think. Okay. Yeah, not enough refrigerant in there to kick the compressor on. We should see it come on in just a minute here. Oh, there we go. Yep, we're coming to life now. Pressure's coming up. 1.25 pounds installed. 
And what we're looking for is about 40 pounds, maybe 50 pounds on the low side. Uh, last time around we had 60 PSI over here, which was way too high. There we go, look at that. Right where I want, check that out. 40 PSI, 240, mint. The charge is nearly complete, 1.517 pounds refrigerant. Let's go take a peek at the gauge in the dash and see what kind of temps we're making. Are we cold yet? Let's see here, we've got any lumens. Right now we're at 62 degrees, okay. Let's kick up the fan speed some. Put our window up a little bit, not smashing. There we go. Oh, compressor is complete. It beeped at us. And let's do hose compensate. Okie dokes, engine cover is back on. I just connected our lines. Let's power down our illuminator right here and we're gonna back this thing out and get it out on the road. By the way, I've also reinstalled the cover that I removed. All right, hood coming down. Let's get our prop rod in its rod location. Goodbye, Charger Hemi. Let's kick that out of the way. This one out of the way. Ooh, I feel the cold. Thanks. See, I better bring my phone, maybe a credit card, because it ain't got no gas in it. And I'm scared on to drive cars with no gas in them. It's never good, you don't want to do that. Backing up. All right, pulling out on the road, let's pick up some speed, let the system stabilize, and we'll check our temperatures. But first, I'm gonna go get some gas. Need fuel. Aha. Open sesame. Waiting, waiting, processing. We're always waiting. Come on. Authorizing. Remove card. There we go. That one. No, I don't want to save money with giving you my phone number. Begin fueling. A film production company and digital marketing agency, Mint Mobile, Wealth Simple, and most recently his investment in. Done. Let's get out of here. Cat clicks. All right, let's get out of here. Go ride right around some, watch this thing stabilize. Well, that's weird. It still ain't got no gas in it. Look at that. Put in three gallons. We're going over the bridge. We're at about 55, 60 miles per hour. We're looking over here at the vent. I'm seeing about 52 degrees center vent temp right now. My thing's about to fall out. So it's uh, phenomenally much, much more cooler than it was when we started. Uh, we started off the other day at about 80 degrees. Uh, did the TXV, ended up at 70 degrees, and now we're at 50 and some change. So that's good enough for me. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna head back to the shop, get this thing parked. I'm out of here, it's in the day. The shadows are long, the sun is low. I'm tired, time to go home. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna close this video out right now. Uh, I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If in fact you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later. In the video, in the VC, in the Doge, in the day, in the transmission. This thing's got a door open or something. The back lights are on and it keeps giving me a dinging, chiming thing and it says, hey, a door open. I got a door open. It's not okay. Hope it's not mine.